Guys, we are here at Home Depot. Home Depot just reported their second fiscal quarter results. I'm going to read right from their press release right here. And they're up 1% right now. This is, I was expecting them after seeing this press release to be down. Listen to this. So they reported sales of $42.9 billion. That's a decrease of 2% from the second quarter of last year. And this is the big one here. Same store sales fell 2% compared to last quarter or the second quarter of last year as well. Now, when it comes to earnings, net earnings came in at $4.7 billion or $4.65. Compared, I'm comparing this back to 2022, $5.2 billion or $5.05 per share. So you can see that there is a struggle compared to 2022. Now, the CEO, he did say in this quarter they were pretty pleased with what they were seeing. They did see a hit in big ticket discretionary items and we've talked about it before discretionary items when you're in some type of i'm going to call it quote unquote recessionary environment people are not going to spend that much on discretionary items and that's exactly what we're seeing now they reaffirmed their 2023 full year guidance sales and comparable sales are expected to be down between two and five percent operating margins between 13 uh, for, sorry 14.3 and 14 percent so those are going to stay relatively the same. Now, the big news that came out and a possibility for the big jump in price is the $15 billion share buyback program that they're putting in place. Now, I'm going to venture to say that based on the quick metrics that I looked at, this isn't the brightest idea, but they probably have a reason for it, driving earnings per share um, and making something on their earnings reports look good. So $15 billion share buyback program put into place here. All right, so a couple of really good things that Home Depot has going for them. They dominate this home improvement market. 60.17% of the market share. And of course, the next closest is Lowe's at 37.1%. So you can see that they have a very, very big difference. A lot more people are going to Home Depot. They're kind of seen as more of the consumer store instead of the store where the contractor goes to, which is more of a Lowe's. Now also, Home Depot has an incredible net income margin, about 10.75%, and I'm gonna compare it with Lowe's, 6.7%. So you can see that they're doing better in a lot of ways compared to Lowe's, and they are absolutely dominant in this industry. So in July of 2023, sales are expected to fall between two and 5%, and earnings per share is expected to decrease seven to 13%. So there are some bear cases against Home Depot, but all in all, this is still the store that people go to for home improvement. My mom is inside the store right now shopping for stuff. So this is the place to go. All right, so let's find out the price that we would pay for Home Depot stock. Paul's gonna show you right now. All right, so now let's look at Home Depot in our stock analyzer tool. Remember guys, 10 year analysis, really, really high return on invested capital. Moat City, when they put a new store up, they make a lot of money and they are international. So they could see a lot more international growth for Home Depot. So let's do revenue growth. Let's do uh, three, five, and seven. Profit margin, very healthy and very consistent. Let's do nine, 10, and 11. Free cash flow margin, let's do 8.5, 9.25, and 10. And for PE and price of free cash flow, again, a high moat, pretty decent growth potential. Um, I, oh, and Target just hit my stock price, so let's dismiss that. PE, let's go with... 16, 19, and 22. 16, 19, and 22 for the price of free cash flow. And for a desired return, guys, I like 10, 12, and 14 because I've already beaten it up a lot on the low side. So I'm comfortable getting a 10% return on my low assumptions. Let's hit the analyze button. Home Depot is currently at $330 per share. Oh boy. Low price of basically 190 to 200. High price of 270 to 300, middle price of 230 to 245. It's on my watch list at 230, so the software will notify me the second it hits there, like Target just did. And if you pay today's price and our low assumptions occur, I'm gonna make two and a half percent. If our middle assumptions occur, seven percent. And if our best assumptions occur and I pay today's price, I'll make 11.4 percent. So again, that's how important the assumptions are in terms of showing you the returns that have to happen, that will happen if those assumptions occur. Thanks a lot, guys.